Hi, my name is Norman and today we're going to build a front men's mask from the Netflix show Squid Game. At first I was a little worried because, you know, the mask actually didn't really fit on my build plate. So uh, what I did was tilt the mask just slightly to the back and then suddenly it fits. So the problem is that if you print with generic settings, it's mostly almost default settings from the Prusa Mini, let's see, you're gonna end up with a lot of support. You can also see down here it's 343 grams. So to counter that, you can actually just, because you know it's a not very detailed model here, it's just literally low polygon, you can reduce the distance or increase the distance between the support pillars, which is, um, I think it's here, pattern spacing, right? I think five millimeters should be good. Also overhang, maybe uh, reduce it to 45. So if you decrease this number here, support is less likely to appear. So now let's see how, how much support we need or how much material overall. Yeah, we saved about 100 grams of support material just by changing those two numbers. So just in case your printer isn't big enough to actually fit the, uh, you know, the suggested model with support, yeah, where is it now? Here, this is the, the suggested model, the blue one, and it has support on top, and that's gonna make your life a lot easier, and you're gonna save a lot of material. But if your printer isn't big enough as the Prusa Mini, this is like the only way you can print it uh, with a more or less decent uh, result. So whenever I start a project, I'm not only trying to you know, finish it, I'm also trying to improve it. So I saw this mask and from my experience from the mask I did a very long time ago actually. <laughs> yeah, I knew that this mask here is unwearable. Not only, um, you know, it's very, gonna be very uncomfortable on your face because you're gonna have the rough underside of support touching the inside of the mask, but also, yeah, these two tiny holes here on the sides. How are you supposed to attach that thing to your head without, you know, having a small ribbon cutting into your flesh? if you want to exaggerate it. <laughs> so cogs started turning here. Well, I came up for, for one solution for each of those problems. <laughs> for the insides, I came up with this. Well, I didn't come up, you can buy this. Um, these are self-adhesive foam inlays for bicycle helmets or any kind of helmets actually. Uh, these things are perfect. You can get them in different sizes and different thicknesses. I decided to go with, you know, the smallest. It's very thin because I didn't want the mask to be, you know, a kilometer away from your face. Yeah, I haven't looked through it yet, but it looks like that you have these self-adhesive pads with uh, Velcro and then you can just Velcro them in like so. Hopefully it's gonna stay there, right? We need to think. Actually, I'm not gonna think, I'm just gonna put it on my face and try to guess where I'm going to have points of contact, probably here on the nose, uh, cheeks here, um, maybe here, especially I should get rid of the support as well. So, um, basically this is just a process of trial and error. I'm really having trouble, you know, finding the right spots where to put uh, the cushions. I actually anticipated it to be a little bit easier because the problem is that you are having most of your contact, or me at least, here at the nose and here. So the entire mask is basically rocking back and forth on your nose and on your cheekbones or whatever that is here on the sides. This is where I put all the cushions. The problem is that here at the mouth and at your forehead, there's space. Uh, naturally, I would just fill out this gap here. Uh, the, the space at your mouth probably is gonna come in handy when you wanna, you know, breathe. 
I don't know yet what to put here. I was thinking about just stacking them up, but before I do that, because you know, that's a lot of stuff which is gonna come in the way, I think we should first finish this thing and see what space we got left for cushions. So for the eyes, um, these are just, you know, one or two layers of grid <laughs> because I need this thing to form around, you know, the eye, which isn't flat, unfortunately. I'm going to put depths all around the eye so that um, I can press this down and then um, hopefully it's gonna stay. Only thing is that it needs to be a little bit further away from the edge so that um, I won't have any bleed to the front. There you go. I'm pretty sure if you heat that thing up, it's going to, uh, you know, get in shape a little bit easier. I hate super glue. Oh. Okay, it forms pretty easily. Oh, that's so good. Okay, one eye is done, and let's do the other one. So uh, yeah, using the VersaTip is most definitely the way to go. Again, um, I mentioned this in another video as well. This thing is a really, really handy tool when you're working with 3D prints. Uh, very, very controlled heat with that thing. So before we get back into cushioning the forehead, uh, I think we should, you know, make the second and last mod here. This is a head strap for a GoPro actually. As you remember, I also used that thing for the other mask. This is just the best way to go because basically uh, you have all the infrastructure already. You, you can, you know, adjust it on both ways. You have anti-slip things. The only thing which you need to account is that. Yeah, how do we manage that? So I was really struggling to come up with a way to attach this to the forehead, you know, without drilling a hole here through there and having a screw stick out in the front. But I came up with a solution and it includes not using this, <laughs> I'm very sorry, but we're gonna salvage this one here. This is basically the same but for the chest so it's not for your head and the cool thing is it does have um, these straps here. So basically this one strap here will be enough to hold the entire mask because it's not very heavy. Also you won't have this awkward thing in the top. So yeah, I will use these two holes on the side as a reference point because they actually have a very nice position. But of course I need a you know slot instead of a hole. We are also going to use the, the Versa tip here to cut the slot. Yeah, first I'm gonna mark because that's very important as you guys know. It's gonna take my scissors and do a quick scratch. There you go. So we are going to switch to the cutting tool. Um, it's just a very, very dull blade, but it's once it's hot, um, you know, it's hopefully gonna cut through the material here. Just gonna see. See, it's, uh, I mean, this is very, very thin, but that's the basic idea. So now I think it's hot enough and we should be able to make a very, very careful cut. The reason why I'm using the VersaTip and not just the real Dremel multi-tool, if you just remove the material, you're gonna have a larger hole basically, but if you use heat, you're gonna weld all those layers together 
and hopefully um, have a stronger uh, bond around your hole, which is pretty good. Alright, cleaned up those edges here. As you can tell already, we got one problem. <laughs> We're gonna need a loop. We're gonna have to open the loop here, uh, put it through those holes and then uh, sew it up again. I'm just gonna try to preserve as much ribbon as I can. Dremel Versatip, baby. So we're gonna have to open it. So, and then we can finish it and close it. Ah, boxes, boxes. So we have the sewing kit. That's my sewing kit. Um, and the only thing which we need is, well, one needle. This one seems about right. And I have this wax twine here, but also have a lot more of wax twine here. And this is the stuff we're gonna use. So it may look like I knew what I was doing, uh, actually it does not look like that, but um, basically it's nothing special, just once back and once forth and uh, that's actually a pretty solid, solid uh, connection here. I'm actually quite happy how it came out. So we're almost done. Um, my problem with my face is that it's literally pressing into my eyes. I don't know, it's, it's sitting on my nose basically and when the ribbons are pulling here, it, you know, the eye sockets are gonna press in. Also, ooh, well, the, the fumes from the super glue, that's probably not very healthy, right? So, um, yeah, still gotta wait a day or two until you can wear it a little bit longer. But I know that I still need some cushions here to prevent, you know, uh, the mask from sinking into your eyes. And also, it's gonna sit like that. And once you have the cushion here, it's gonna be a little bit more straight. We need to come up with something for that. And the solution was actually a little bit simpler than I expected. I just added a little bit more of the same cushion here further up the head. That resulted in my head sitting on these two points where it gets a little bit closer. So that's basically it. Quick and easy print and upgrade. And um, to be honest, it actually turned out pretty nice. I mean, yeah, I'm supposed to wear a hoodie. Also, you can't even see that I have my eyes closed at the moment because the fumes are still burning in my eyes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's time to take that mask off. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.